Welcome to the Spider-Man 2 Swinging Tutorial. This tutorial will cover how to swing fast, mostly for speed earning purposes, but should be useful as well for anybody who wants to move quickly, or even anyone who is having trouble with some of the game's harder challenges, like pizza missions or races. This guide assumes that you have some experience in the game, such as a casual playthrough, and know how to swing at a basic level. Let's get into it. Swinging is the main movement mechanic of the game, so learning to swing effectively should be a priority. You can do this by following three major rules. Let's go through them one by one. Do as many boosts as possible. Pressing the left trigger will give you a boost in your swing, giving you some extra speed on top of your natural uh, swing arc. Once you've boosted once on a swing, you won't be able to boost again on that swing for a couple seconds. Because of this and the fact that your momentum largely carries between swings, the best strategy to get in retain speed is to boost as much as possible, which also means swinging as much as possible, since each swing gives a free boost with no cooldown. This brings us to our second rule, don't touch the ground. Touching the ground is slow. You don't want to touch the ground, the best thing that you can do there is jump, which is much slower than swinging. Now, if you were to take lots of long, slow arcs that end with you flying upwards in the air gracefully, it's not too hard to avoid touching the ground most of the time. But that's not fast. You may have noticed that the fast way of swinging, which is swing, boost, jump out of the swing, into another swing kind of tends to lead you towards touching the ground in a natural downwards angle. Well, we can avoid this with the third rule. Use gravity to your advantage. Because gravity tends to flow into your momentum just like any other uh, force in this game, we can use that. And instead of letting ourselves touch the ground like that, we could allow ourselves a slightly longer swing to curve our, uh, ourselves upward and then use that upward momentum that we've gained as fuel using our height to then swing a little bit faster. Like this, so I'll go swing down and then when I, when I think I'm getting a little bit too low, I'll swing a bit up. And then I'll repeat. You can kind of get into a, a pattern with this. Now that we've covered some basic guidelines, let's discuss some more specific things. First thing is, aiming your swings is your friend. All the rules I've discussed so far are very helpful and will totally get you through the ideal swinging conditions. You know, a long street, building, nice buildings to swing off of on both sides, no issues. But what if we didn't have such an ideal environment? Consider this situation. I'm swinging down the street, and there are trees to one side, and buildings to the other. I don't want to swing off the trees, they might send me totally in the wrong direction, trees be being known to be pretty unreliable in this game, although not impossible to navigate. I would certainly prefer to swing off of the buildings. Well here's where aiming your swings is your friend. Spider-Man will pretty much exclusively swing off of things uh, that you aim towards. So by only aiming towards the buildings on the street, I don't have to swing off these trees at all. And I can hug the side of the buildings to, uh, to make sure that I don't accidentally swing too far and, and bonk into an alley, for example. Aiming your swings also lets you uh, swing at things that are further away, or even things that are completely behind you. When you're swinging, you want to make sure that you're always thinking ahead. See the road that's in front of you, and see the building placement at a glance, and decide how you want to set it up. For example, here, there's a gap in these buildings, so I get a bit of height so that I can go diagonally, diagonally over them. And generally, the decision between whether you want to go around something or over it is something that there always isn't a right answer for, and something that you might have to decide on the fly. Or, if you're a speedrunner, 
maybe you take the time to uh, to lab it out a little bit. Try each one and see which one is faster for you. This next one is how good swinging becomes great swinging, and is something that isn't intuitive to a lot of people. And that involves how you transition from one swing into the next. So a lot of people might uh, think it natural to do something like this. You see, I swing, and then I'm jumping out of the swing to immediately start another jump, charging my jump in between my swings. Let's you retain a lot of height, you're not falling as much, and you're still swinging a decent bit, and boosting more. And there's a couple problems with that. The first problem is that you are not boosting as much as, as you possibly could. Because it does, it does take, even if it's not very much time, it does take some time to, uh, to jump out and, and start another jump before your swing. So you're already losing out on just a little bit of speed from that. But more importantly, you're no longer using gravity to your advantage by doing this. Consider this, where I am retaining my height, but I, I'm not falling at all, and I'm not using the gravity from those falls to my advantage. Basically, the only speed that I'm getting is, is is from my own boosts. But if you compare it bringing it back here, I'm going much faster because my own gravity is allowing me to get that speed. And there are some times where you might want to do this. For example, you, you, you go a little bit too low to the ground and maybe you, do, you just want to get some height. And in fact, Jumping out of your swing and charging your jump like this is something that you absolutely should do when you're trying to get height. It's not the only way to do it. You could just swing fast enough the point that your own speed, just by letting the arc go for a little bit higher, lets you swing quite high. But generally, if, if you have height and, and tall buildings around you, you want to use those as a resource. And by jumping out of your swings like this, you are squandering that resource that is height. Let's talk a bit about easy swinging versus normal swinging. For the most part, it really doesn't matter. You can use whatever style you prefer. Personally, I use normal swinging. But if you are going to use easy swinging, there's uh, something that you should be made aware of that relates slightly to the last topic. Might be best to just show you. So I'm going to be swinging down this street with normal swinging and then back with easy swinging. And then once I'm done, we'll talk about the difference. That was a pretty standard, if a little bit, uh, an optimal swing down the street there. I've switched to easy swinging now. And look. What happens when I finish my swing? You see how it kind of pops me up? Notice... So I... That is a result of the natural uh, swing ending for easy swinging when you just release the trigger. Now I'm going to, without turning off easy swinging, swing back, but instead of releasing the trigger to let go of my swing, I'm going to just tap A like I normally would with normal swinging. You see how the, when the swing ends, I don't pop up? That's what you want. Because, again, you don't want to fight against gravity. Basically, easy swinging gives you a little bit pop-up of height, probably to make it easier to not touch the ground on accident, but by doing so is inherently limiting your speed somewhat. PLDR, when easy swinging, don't let go of the swing, Tap jump out of it. My final tip for swinging in this game is that experience beats everything. There are so many little nuances and tricks that you can learn for swinging in this game. Not to mention that everything gets a little bit different when you're swinging on, say, swing speed 8 instead of swing speed 1. You could spend hundreds of hours, or even thousands if you're somebody like me, learning how to swing in this game, and still feel like you're constantly improving. So 
I recommend that you play. If you're a speedrunner, start doing runs. And don't worry too much about trying to get good right away. Just focus on having fun. And over time, the experience will catch up to you. And before you know it, you'll be doing some crazy things that you've never seen before. Anyways, hopefully all of these tips and tricks uh, have been helpful to you in some capacity. Hope that you have fun uh, swinging around in this game. If you're interested, feel free to leave a sub or something like that. And uh, have a good one.